And it's just an easy sound generator, basically. Hi everyone, I hope you're a good guy. Welcome to a new video. So today, Ableton Live 11 is finally available for everybody. And I'm not gonna talk about all of the new features as I already made a video back in November when it's been announced. I will put the link in the description and it appears in the corner right here. Now today I'm gonna talk about the feature that I'm the most excited about. And this feature kind of change everything. I mean, not everything, I'm being a bit dramatic, but all of the racks I've made, all of the instruments rack or the effects rack, all of my present bank as well, just with this feature, like bring them to the next level. So today we're gonna talk about how this new feature affects all of my previous work and rack, how it will affect as well the forthcoming content, all what I'm gonna release this year, all of the new rack. And to give you an idea of what you can expect this year, at the end of the video, I will create a rack using this feature and you're gonna see it's kind of crazy and it's a rack that you can get really easy results and even like someone who just started with Ableton can use it and can get great results with. But first, let's talk about quickly about this feature just to explain you and then I will show them with example how you can take the best of it and really take them to the next level. So if you're familiar with my channel, you already have guessed probably which feature I'm talking about. It's obviously about Rack. You know that I use a lot of Rack on this channel. And so for example, here I have this preset and you can Firstly, you can add some more macro, but to be fair, this is kind of counterintuitive. Like the good thing with the macro, you had like just eight macro, so you have come to limit yourself to have only the most effective and the most useful macro. So this way you could speed up your workflow. That was the idea, that was how I was using them. So having 16 is kind of intimidating and it's kind of breaking this kind of intuitive things. But if you stay tuned at the end of the video, I have an example of how I'm gonna use all of the 16 macro in a way that it's gonna be way much more inspiring and that even someone who just started with Ableton can get great results. But yeah, as well, what you can do is limit to, for example, to macro. For example, if you know you're just gonna modulate the filter and the GK, you can leave it like this, like this is clean and neat and tidy. But yeah, one other feature I like is random. So you can see you get different results. So one the cool thing here, for example, you see you have operate, you have the filter, DK. Maybe this value, you don't want them to be affected by the random. You can just right click and exclude from randomization. So this way it will not get too much weird effect. And now if I bring this one, for example, to 16, get real result. And for example, if there is one you like, you have now variation and you can save, for example, if you like this one, you can create new and it's create a new variation. And you can see here, I have So that's pretty dope. And you can see here, like for example, one of the presets of my Wavetable Techno Bank, you can now create different variation inside the same preset. So you basically, instead of having a bank with more than 100 presets, you multiply this by five and you have like 500 presets basically. So obviously it's depend of your instrument rack. Sometimes you have less macro, so it's the result of the randomness are less varied, but you get the idea, it's pretty cool. And then you can just save it. And next time you reopen, it will have all the variation and you can keep your default. I always recommend to, when you open the preset, click new like this, you rename default. And then after you can play with the random. So that was kind of the basic explanation, like just to show you all the new features. Now I'm gonna show you how you can use them in a different way. And first way I've thought about using them is, so last year I created this rack, which is, I call the HMX FX rack. Basically what it does is kind of a multi-effect rack where you have some distortion, you have some delay, you have some reverb and you have some EQ. And what I've done is you have, it's basically rack inside rack. And for example, you can see I have different kind of saturation all mapped to a macro, which is map as well to the macro here. So for example, here I have a certain type of distortion, but here is another distortion. Here is another different distortion. 
And I mainly create this frag because I put some distortion, delay, and reverb that I usually don't use. And was a good way if, you know, sometimes it can happen, you always use the same distortion, the same delay, the same reverb, and you kind of feel stuck. And was a, is a rack which is I use sometimes when I'm stuck, and I know I can grab this, this rack, and I, it will be some delay reverb that I'm not using usually, and it will generate some different ID, basically. But here the cool thing is you can use randomness because the cool thing with randomness is basically it's gonna set the macro to values that you didn't really think about, you know? Like usually as a human, you're gonna use things in the normal conventional way rather than randomly, it's just gonna say like, for example, sometimes the reverb too much or the, with the distortion too much and things that we usually not do, but randomness will do it for you. And so when you click, you can see how the same sound comes sound completely differently and again you can set different variation so imagine now when you when you're gonna save you you fx rack Next time you're gonna reopen, you know that you're gonna have probably eight, 10 uh, different combination of distortion, delay and reverb already made and ready to use. So that's gonna obviously fasten your workflow. All right, and finally, the most important rack, the plat de resistance. I told you the idea was to use the 16 macro. So I'm gonna take operator and I'm gonna explain you why in a second and I'm gonna put the macro and use them 16. So the idea is you use all the macro, but I'm not gonna use them to tweak as a rack like this. I'm gonna use them with the random. And you know, operator, it's a FM synthesis sent, and it's quite unpredictable. You know, it's not like subtractive synthesis where you can more or less know where you go when you tweak your knob. With FM synthesis, sometimes you're gonna modulate a certain oscillator with a certain pitch, but if you modulate with another one, as a higher pitch is gonna sound completely different than if you modulate with the lower pitch, and if you change the algorithm as well, it's gonna sound different. So what about if we map some of the parameter of the operator to the macro and then play with the random? That can be something interesting, something generating sound design idea without any effort and super quickly. So in order to do that, what I've done is I've took oscillator G and I've applied the course to macro 13, defined to macro 14, the level to macro 15, and finally the waveform to macro 16. So here you have all of this macro control, the oscillator G. So now I'm gonna do the same here for oscillator C and starting again, here the course, here the fine, here the level, and here the waveform. Waveform, and I'm gonna do the same for oscillator B. All right, now, so now what's happening is if I play, I have my sine wave because here I have just all of the oscillator, the level is down, but as far as I will play random, I will start to get different noise, but this is not enough because obviously the algorithm is always the same. So maybe if you change, if you add some randomness to the algorithm, maybe it can be a great idea too. So let's map this as well. And we're gonna map it to the second macro. So this way now, and for the first oscillator, usually oscillator A, you always, you always listen to it. So I'm not gonna automate the level because obviously I don't, I always want the level to be at zero, but I wanna be able to control the cost and the fine. So I'm gonna map this to the macro three and I wanna map this to the macro four. And same, I don't wanna change the waveform. I'm always gonna use a sine wave. So now, so you can hear you already get different kind of sound. Now there is few things you can do to make it a bit more effective. First being oscillator B level, oscillator B, when you check the algorithm, you can see it's quite, you can hear it quite often on almost more than half of the algorithm, you will hear oscillator B and he's always the one just before oscillator A, except for uh, this one and this one and this one. So it's quite important. So you don't want his level to be too down. You know what I mean? Like you, it can happen sometimes, but most of the time you want it to have a little bit of effects and the thing is by default, it can go until minus infinite and until minus 30 dB, you don't, you don't really hear it the difference. So 
what I've done is in the map, I said the minus 30 dB, if I go to my oscillator B, minus 30 dB is the minimum this way. The range is from minus 36 to zero. And I've just tried it and it makes the result uh, nicer most of the time. Because if you have, if you shut down your oscillator B, some, most of the time it's gonna bypass the oscillator C and D according to your algorithm. Or it will always sound like it will be like just a sine wave playing and not the other one. So that's why I've set like this. Another thing you can see the course here is going like kind of crazy. This is can be great if you really want some wicked sound, but you can just maybe see, say the maximum at six. This way you get something a bit more, I don't know how to say, but like less weird, let's say. So this way. The thing is, if you don't do these two things, you have a lot of chance that to always kind of sounding and having the same sound, something like super, very weird or very noisy. By refining this parameter, you get kind of a wider range of sound. And yeah, the last macro I've assigned is the filter. And so now if I put color and I rename properly, we go here and you can see here, I have basically exactly the same, except I just, put the color according to the oscillator. The oscillator. You see, I, I keep the color code with my algorithm and the filter. All right, and now you got all of your color. You can obviously play. Get different term just by pressing random. Basically, you're just generating preset kind of, and you can after save them obviously here if when you press new once you have something you like. And then you can really get different kind of sound so here you can see here I use the bandpass filter rather than the other one was the low pass filter and that's the thing what I've done you can see here the name is random operator BPF for bandpass filter but I've made several version and so I have the default one where it's it's more like a classic low pass filter there is no envelope and the amplitude envelope is this way but what I recommend to do is basically, for example, I use, I create a preset which I call flute. And basically I've just changed the amplitude envelope to have like at, attack at 30 milliseconds and short decay and no sustain to kind of have this plucky fluty sound. And same with the filter. You have the same kind of envelope. And again with your variation. And if you want something more like a kind of brass, let's say. You see they are kind of sounding different. So that's something I, I recommend to do. It's like keeping the same randomness with the same macro, but then after making different preset variation with different amplitude envelope and filter envelope or filter type. So this way you, for example, let's say you want to use this method and you want to create, let's say a breath sound or more like a sustained sound. This one is perfect. Let's say you want something with a glide or legato. Perfect. I've got this one where I basically, what I've done is I have activate here the, 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 the pitch and I activate the glide. So this way. I have the glide here, but yeah, obviously if you want something uh, pluckier, you can do it here. So here you can see I, I removed the pitch envelope and if you check the filter, you can see you have a filter envelope with a short decay. So I get something more pluckier and I'm more a techno guy, so I like to use bandpass filter. So here's what I've done as well. I apply a bandpass filter. And so you can. Get different results. And again, you can still all the time random.
and it's just an easy sound generator basically. So now imagine if you combine this with you can have easily something more ambient or something more techno stock so yeah i took these two examples because you can see how you can quickly generate new sound design idea and generate new effect and easily inspire you basically if you are in one of these days that you don't know where to start you don't know what to do it's happened to all of us whatever you do you feel the impression you always do the same you always do the same sound same effect just grab this two rack and for sure you will easily find something you like so as usual i will put both rack in the description you can download them for free please consider to like and subscribe before to download the rack it helps the channel thank you very much for watching guys have fun with the new ableton live 11 and see you soon guys bye bye